What's up everyone, welcome back to a brand new video. On the last part, we saw what happened once everyone encountered the Saiyans, and everything afterwards. Although there were two casualties, our heroes were successful against the Saiyans. They defeated Nappa and Vegeta. And even with some fighters dying, there is hope. They're gonna go to Namek to get the Dragon Balls. Meanwhile, Shallot's still trying to figure out who he is and why he's here. And we'll be getting more into that in this part. For this video, let's let like over 3500 likes. Once we hit that, I'll continue with another part of this series. Anyways, let's pick up from here. We left off with Goku and Gohan facing off against Vegeta and Nappa, and of course, Vegeta and Nappa lost pretty horribly. Unlike their first encounter with these people on Earth, this wasn't even a close battle. It was pretty effortless on Goku and Gohan's part. And that leaves Goku in a bit of a predicament. If he lets these two go, he doesn't know what they'll do. But he could also possibly team up with them, although he's not sure if he could trust these two. But Vegeta's also thinking the same thing. Maybe it would be better if he just joins Kakarot and Gohan. He assumes the others are here as well, which means they could use all their power against Frieza. It would be a win-win for everyone. They get to stay alive, and they all get to fight Frieza together. Not to mention, Kakarot knows that these two won't betray him because they have a common goal. And this also falls into Vegeta's original plan. He does want Kakarot and Shallot's power to help him against Frieza, and this works perfectly. This alliance is uneasy and it's temporary, but still, it's an alliance nonetheless, and it could be beneficial for everyone involved. Without any other better options, each group reluctantly agrees to team up for now. Although Goku makes one thing clear, they will help defeat Frieza, but the Dragon Balls will be for their group. It is Vegeta and Nappa's fault that they're here after all, and either way it's not like Vegeta and Nappa will get them anyways. If they lost that battle against Goku and Gohan, they're not going to be able to fight them for the Dragon Balls, especially when the group's fully together again. Vegeta still wanted them for himself, but he guesses he can agree with that. It's more important to defeat Frieza, and maybe these fighters can actually help. Although there is an issue, after their encounter with Goku and Gohan, they are pretty injured. If they want to fight Frieza, they need to be at full strength. Not to mention, once they heal from these injuries, they will get a lot stronger, which will be very beneficial. It's probably a good idea to head towards one of Frieza's ships and heal up Vegeta and Nappa. And alongside that, while they're at the ships, they might find some of the Dragon Balls that Frieza's collected. So they decide to do that. Gohan's still a bit nervous about actually trusting them with their group, but Goku reassures him that it's fine. They're so much stronger than Vegeta and Nappa, and besides, there's a bigger threat at hand. It's better to have only one threat instead of worrying about Vegeta and Nappa as well. They eventually do arrive at Frieza's ship, and just like they expected, it seems Frieza is there along with a lot of his army. Alright, now this is going to be kind of an issue, and they're going to have to deal with it sooner or later because Frieza does have some Dragon Balls on that ship according to their radar. They did bring Senzus too, so they could heal Vegeta and Nappa with those, but it's more efficient this way. They'd rather save the Senzus for dire situations. Right now they need to coax Frieza out of there somehow. They need some sort of distraction that'll actually draw him out. But luckily, it seems like they're not going to have to wait long. While all of this was going on, Shallot's group was led towards Guru's place. And the process goes pretty smoothly. They don't encounter any Frieza soldiers along the way, and once they get there, Guru can sense that they have good intentions, granting them the Dragon Ball, but while they're there he also gives them one more thing. He can unlock their potential. He first starts with Krill, who sees a massive boost in power, and after his potential is unlocked, he realizes that he's about as strong as Shaolin. Ten Shinhan goes up next and it's the same effect. Both of them are now around 80k in terms of their power level. Shaolin is excited to go up for his turn, and Guru is amazed at how much hidden potential he has. Shaolin has his potential unlocked, and the effects are very noticeable. His power spikes dramatically jumping from 80,000 to 500,000, a massive power level of half a million. He doesn't even know what to think of this. Although he knows they need to get everyone over here immediately, they need to get their potential unlocked too. But also Guru tells Shallot one more thing. He could sense something within Shallot's heart, uncertainty. He can also tell that Shallot's not like the others. He's not from this era, and maybe Guru can bring back his memories. This is perfect, it's exactly what he wanted. He didn't even know Guru had this ability. Guru places his hand on Shallot's head once more, and begins looking deeper than just his power. He has even more latent potential than he thought. But also, Shallot's memories begin flooding back to him again. Or at least, part of them. The name that he learned before, Giblet, and that figure that he saw in his memories, it becomes more and more clear. It's someone that looks exactly like him. It surprises him at first, until more memories come back. This is his twin brother. One of his memories is brought back. He remembers fighting evil Saiyans with his brother. He begins remembering more. They were righteous Saiyans, inheriting the power of a Super Saiyan God, or something like that. They were training to get stronger to protect others that couldn't defend themselves. As more memories flood back to him, Shallot is suddenly interrupted. They realize Guru was drawing more and more power out of him, but from before when everyone else's powers were drawn out, they realize that they just let out a bunch of energy, and they could sense people moving towards them. Damn, Shallot's gonna have to come back here later. He needs to learn more about himself and who he is. But this is valuable info. He needs to find his brother. He doesn't know if Jidla ended up here at all, but if he did, he needs to find him. That's his main goal right now. On the other side of the planet, Goku and group watch as Frieza's scouter explodes, as well as everyone else's around him. They can't tell where the power came from because their scouters blew up, but they know there was some dramatic power increase somewhere. 
Guru unlocking everyone's potential actually caused this, and it was a perfectly timed distraction for them. Goku and his group can now finally sneak into the ship, putting Vegeta and Nappa into healing pods. This shouldn't take long, they only need about an hour or so, and Vegeta tells them if Frieza or anyone else comes back, they need to be pulled out immediately. It doesn't matter if they're fully healed yet, they can't risk it. Goku nods in agreement, and while they're on the ship, they also find other Dragon Balls. They were left relatively unattended. There's a few weak soldiers that stayed on there, but thankfully no one has scouters so they can't sense what's going on. Goku and Gohan quickly deal with them, and they find a few Dragon Balls for themselves. Goku will stay here, it's too dangerous for Gohan, and he tells them to go back to Bulma with the Dragon Balls. But he needs to make sure that his power remains low. But they're still confused, that power spike, it seemed to come from Krillin and Shinhan and Shallot, and Shallot's was particularly interesting. Not only was his dramatic, but there was two separate spikes. He wonders what's going on with them, and hopefully everything's okay, but he tells Gohan not to worry. That distraction will be more than enough to occupy Frieza for a while. So he heads off with the few Dragon Balls that they find, going back to Bulma. Nail can of course sense Frieza's soldiers coming towards Guru. Shao asks if they should move him, but Nail says no. They'll fight off Frieza's army. But Krillin has an idea. Frieza and his army can't actually sense Ki. They only have scouters and they're relying on that. That means they might not know their general location. So they don't actually have to wait here and protect Guru. They could try and face Frieza's army halfway, preventing them from ever getting here. Nail's not too sure about this idea, but it might actually work and it'll be much more beneficial for Guru because it's less risky for him. A few Namekian warriors stay there to defend him, but Nail joins Krillin and Shinhan and Shala as they head out. And this plan actually works. Eventually some Frieza soldiers arrive, and without their scouters it's hard to communicate. But eventually more and more of the group begins gathering there, being easily killed by Shala and co. Krillin checks the radar to see where the Dragon Balls are, and it seems more have been given to Bulma. That must be Goku or Gohan. He decides to take the two that they've gotten and go over there. But before he leaves, Nail says he'll take them. He appears to be the weakest of the four, and it would be better if they all stay here since they know how to fight better together. Nail's powerful, but he might be more of a burden than anything because he doesn't know how to fight alongside them. Those three definitely have better synergy, and along the way, he'll bring more Namekian warriors back with him, even fusing to get stronger. He takes the Dragon Balls and flies away, as Shallot's group continues fighting off Frieza's army. Eventually, Frieza himself arrives. The group's a bit concerned, unsure of what to expect, but Shallot's confident. With his new power boost, as well as Krillin and Tenshinhan's, he feels they'll be enough. Frieza's a little bit confused too, he's never seen this Saiyan before, was it one that escaped somehow? And the weirdest part is, the Saiyan doesn't seem to know who he is. Surely all Saiyans would know Frieza, but another thing, his armor, it doesn't look like anyone else's. If he were a normal Saiyan, he'd have the Frieza Force armor that they gave the Saiyans. But he's not wearing that. Curious, he asks Shallot. He is a Saiyan, isn't he? And Shallot confirms. But he tells Frieza, he's not from this era. He doesn't know who Frieza is or why he's such a big deal, but he'll stop him. Frieza chuckles at this. Big words from a monkey. He'll make sure to silence Shallot. He powers up, and Krillin and Tenshinhan are a bit nervous, but Shallot's unfazed. Thanks to Shallot's second power boost, he got even stronger than where he was before. It's a shame that Guru was interrupted because he'd be a lot stronger if not. But right now, Shallot's at about 700k. Swiftly, he moves in front of Frieza. Frieza's surprised at how quickly he moved. He throws a punch, and Shallot dodges it, and he delivers his own powerful punch to Frieza's gut. And with his other arm, he delivers another punch, throwing Frieza into the ground. He jumps into the air and unleashes a volley of key blocks, causing a massive explosion as Krillin and Shinhan watch on in awe. Is this the same Shallot they knew before? They knew he got stronger, but he's fighting Frieza effortlessly. The smoke dissipates and Frieza's there, pretty injured from all of Shallot's attacks. How is a Saiyan this strong? He's annoyed, but he's gonna have to bring out his other forms. He transforms into his second form. He's injured and angry, and Shallot's pumped up. He didn't know Frieza could transform, and from what Shallot can tell, this might not even be the last of his transformations. Frieza's injuries act as handicaps, and together, the three of them begin fighting Frieza, instead of it just being Shallot this time. Far away, Goku can sense all this. He tries to pull Vegeta and Nappa out of the healing chambers, but Vegeta tells him to wait for now. He can vaguely sense what's going on. He can't really sense Ki as properly as Goku, but he can tell what's happening still. He doesn't know what happened with Shallot, but he should be able to hold out for now. He and Nappa just need a few more minutes to heal. They want to be at full health just in case. And they need to get as much power out of the Zenkai as possible. Reluctantly, Goku puts them back in the healing pods, hoping that Shallot's gonna be okay. Meanwhile, Nail continues heading towards Bulma. Along the way, he picks up the last Dragon Ball that they need. Not to mention, he fuses with a couple Namekian warriors too. His power keeps increasing more and more. He was the strongest Namekian before, but now he's even way beyond that. With his sheer speed, he actually gets to Bulma around the same time that Gohan does. Gohan's confused why there's a Namekian here, but Nail tells him who he is and who sent him. Gohan could sense the fight going on and wanted to join. And Nail says he's gonna join too, but first, they need to summon Purunga. Gohan didn't even realize. Nail also brought a couple Dragon Balls with him. They have all seven that they need. And the greatest part is, Nail will act as a translator. He tells Gohan this might be their only chance. Once they summon Purunga, it'll alert Frieza that he's here. So he asks for Gohan's wishes before he summons him. Gohan only has two in mind right now. 
He wants to revive Piccolo and Yamcha, assuming they could just do it with one wish, but Nail says it doesn't work like that with Perunga. Although the good thing is, Perunga can grant three wishes, so they can revive Piccolo and Yamcha, and with a third wish, they can even bring one of them here. Gohan says that it's probably better to bring Piccolo. He's another strong Namekian warrior that could help them, and Nail's surprised to hear this. Another Namekian? Depending on how powerful this Piccolo guy is, that gives him a good idea. He summons Perunga, and quickly he makes the wishes. Piccolo and Yamcha are revived, and Nail wishes for Piccolo to be brought to Namek, and not just to Namek, but specifically to them. And within a matter of seconds, the two of them are back to life, and Piccolo ends up right in front of Gohan and Nail. Thankfully, King Kai kept him up to speed with everything. But just as Piccolo gets there, they could already sense Frieza heading in their direction. Of course, Shallot's group saw the sky turn black and saw Perunga, and that also caused Frieza to look over, realizing someone just used the Dragon Balls. He was already angry enough, but this just made him even more pissed off. He completely disregards the fight and tries to leave going towards the dragon, with Shallot and Ko chasing after him attacking him along the way. Nail could sense Frieza heading over, as well as the others. And he tells Piccolo, they need a fuse. They need all the strength they can get, and if the two merge together, it'll be even better. But Piccolo doesn't want to merge with someone he just met, but Nail says he'll just fuse into Piccolo if he wants that. He assures Piccolo that he won't lose control or anything. It'll still be him, just inheriting Nail's powers and then some. He's still unsure, but Gohan tells him that he can do it. And Bulma agrees. The two of them vouch for Nail, and Gohan says that Nail's trustworthy. He was helping Shallot in his group before, and he brought the last Dragon Ball over and summoned Perunga for everyone. He has no ulterior motives. And although Piccolo's still unsure, he reluctantly agrees, hoping that there's no tricks involved. Nail thanks him, and then fuses into Piccolo. Back at Frieza's ship, Goku can sense all of this going down. He saw the dragon get summoned, and he can tell Frieza's heading right for Gohan, and he sensed another energy arrive. It seemed to be Piccolo. He's not waiting anymore. He grabs Vegeta and Nappa out of the pods, and it seems they're just about healed. They begin heading over, and just as they are, he senses something else. Piccolo has a huge spike in power. He can't tell what happened, but it's pretty insane. Shal and his group can sense this too. What's going on? It seems that Piccolo's actually back, but this power of his, they sense Nail's power fading as Piccolo's grow stronger and stronger, and then they realize, wait a second, they might be using the Mechian fusion, and Shallot begins chuckling, confident that this will be Frieza's end. Even Goku, Vegeta, and Nappa are heading over there, which he's surprised that Vegeta and Nappa are going there, but he won't question it. He assumes that they joined Goku or something. Frieza wants to call the Ginyu Force in, but all his scouters are destroyed, and he's not even at a ship. He needs to take this opportunity in front of him first, and even though he sees the dragon disappear, he still heads over. He's gonna kill whoever was responsible for stealing his wishes. But just as he's about to get there, he collides with a massive blast midair, knocking him clean out of the sky into a nearby cliff. He gets up, going into his third form immediately, but as he does so, he sees he's surrounded by more key blasts, which are drawn in right towards him. Shala and his group arrive, and they see Piccolo standing nearby with Gohan. To make things even better, Goku and his group arrive too. And then Shala hears someone call out to him. It's Nappa. He sees an energy blast charge in his hand, and he throws it right at Shala. And Shallot tries to guard against it at first, but the blast suddenly flies up into the sky. And then he realizes what it is. It's an artificial moon. Nappa and Shallot still have their tails, and they're going to use this opportunity to transform. They could use Gohan's power too, but it's too risky for him to transform right now. This is their chance, a collective effort to fight Frieza. Shallot and Nappa both begin transforming into great apes, as the rest begin their battle against Frieza. Even in his third form, Frieza begins to get overwhelmed. Piccolo alone is enough to face him, and then he sees two Saiyans turning into great apes. He's already injured from his fight with Shallot before, and this Namekian that showed up out of nowhere, he's so incredibly powerful, even stronger than that Saiyan he was just fighting. And as he's trying to face the Namekian, he's suddenly hit by a purple beam, looking over to see Vegeta laughing maniacally, with Frieza then receiving an uppercut. It's a Saiyan, surrounded in a red glow, and for some reason he looks familiar. It's, it's just like that one that rebelled against him before. What's happening? His plan, it's all falling apart. He begins turning into his final form, and it does grant him more power, but he's been so injured by this point, he's been too cocky, so he can't use his full power. His injuries are holding him back, and his anger is blinding him, making him fight sloppily. Of course, his final form does make things tougher. He tries fighting Piccolo, but Piccolo immediately jumps out of the way, and Freeze is confused, and then a giant shadow appears over him. He looks up as Shallot jumps down on top of him, trying to crush Frieza with his foot. This deals a lot of damage to Frieza, although he picks Shallot up, surprising the Saiyan. But as he's thrown midair, he launches a wild cannon down towards Frieza, who tries to counter with his own beam. He's then hit by a massive mouth blast from Nappa, throwing him right to Krillin and Tenshinhan. They launch their own beam at him, and he tries to reflect it, but he's then attacked by Piccolo, with some help from Goku, Vegeta, and Gohan. They keep on weakening him more and more, until eventually, they defeat Frieza. Even with his great power, it seems he can't keep up, 
Not only was he heavily injured, but he was out of stamina, and he was blinded by his anger, fighting just randomly. It was a good thing that Shallot was able to deal so much damage before, and with Piccolo dealing damage before he transformed fully. They're glad that they're victorious, although Vegeta and Nappa don't really know what to think. Amidst the celebration, they depart randomly, and no one knows where they went. It's best not to worry about it though. If they do show up again as threats, they'll be able to handle those two. Although they're happy to defeat Frieza, Vegeta and Nappa depart Namek on their own, a bit angry that they didn't get the Dragon Balls. Now heading on their own solo mission. But where will they end up? We'll leave off here for now. So, what did you guys think about this part? Do you think Shout will end up meeting Giblet, and will he figure out what's going on around here? And what'll happen with Vegeta and Nappa? Leave your thoughts and suggestions in the comments below. I'll be sure to check them out to see what you guys think. As always, if you liked the video, be sure to drop a like, and let's try to hit that like goal from the beginning of the video so we can get another part of this series. If you haven't already, why not subscribe? As well as hitting the bell icon so you're notified about any uploads on my channel, including new parts of the series. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you on my next video.